Hey there, let's have a look at the profiling options in Rider. The application that I have here is a Sudoku solver and what it does is when we run it, it will try and solve the Sudoku that we can see on screen here. This one was fairly simple and it was solved in 130,000 steps and in less than half a second. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding some additional zero values so that our Sudoku is more complex and our Sudoku solver will take a longer time to solve it. Let's run it again and we'll see that indeed it will take much longer to solve this Sudoku. The reason for that is that we are brute forcing the puzzle and we are trying all of the different cells, all of the different combinations and then checking if it is a valid solution or not. And as we can see, this one did take longer and we now have a Sudoku that was solved in over 3 million steps and close to 12 seconds. So that's, uh, that's longer than the previous run. I personally think that this can probably be faster, so let's see if we can profile this application and figure out what is taking so much time in, uh, in our source code that we have. Profiling in Rider can be done from the toolbar here, and there's different profiling modes that we can use. There's sampling, tracing, line by line, and timeline. We'll go into those in a future video, but for now let's select timeline and then start the profiler. What will happen is that the profiler will launch our application and attach to it. Startup takes a little bit longer because of course it has to attach and start collecting all of the data and then our application simply runs as normal. And once it finishes, we will get the opportunity to investigate and look at a performance profiling snapshot in the IDE. Our application run has now finished and we can now dive into the snapshot that was captured by the profiler. In the snapshot, we will see all of the different methods that have been called and how much time they took in general. And we also get, because we had the timeline filtering uh, or timeline profiling active, we can also do filters on subsystems. So for example, we can figure out where time was spent in terms of file IO, which in this case should be fairly limited because all we are doing is reading from this Sudoku text file. Uh, we can also filter on, for example, just-in-time compilation, on garbage collection weights, and so on. If you have a database connection, you'll also see database queries and uh, database as a subsystem there, so you can see where most time is spent. Now, in this case, let's not dive into the results too much, but we can already see that the solve method takes most of the time, in this case, close to 14 seconds, so that's probably the one that we should start optimizing. In our next video, we will look at the different profiling modes and then dive into the actual data so we can start looking at what is going on in the application. In the previous step, we've seen timeline profiling in action. The resulting snapshot has all of our method calls that have been done in our codes, and we can see how much time they took in general. We can also filter by subsystems and, for example, say we only want to see methods that did file I.O. or only methods that did link code and so on. This time, let's have a look at tracing. Tracing is a different profiling mode that is available, and you'll see this in a second, that will take much more time to run. So you'll see that our application executes much slower with the tracing profiler attached. The reason for that is that tracing tries to capture all of the number of calls that are being made to a specific method, and for that it requires much more information, so it's more invasive to your application that you are running. So I'm going to close this one and open a snapshot that I collected previously using the tracing profiling modes. There we go. The result is sort of similar to what Timeline provided. Uh, the only exception is that this time all of the call times are much longer, but we can see the number of calls. So we can see, for example, that in our Sudoku solver, try next number has been called over 3 million times, which is uh, essentially what we see when we solve our Sudoku as well. Uh, we can also see the timings here, but keep in mind that the timings in tracing profiling modes are not as accurate as you want them to be. Um, there are different profiling modes available, and those different profiling modes depend on the framework that you are using, but also the operating system that you are using. Sampling and timeline are the two ones that you would typically start your profiling session with because they are the least invasive. Sampling gives you method timing and call timings and that's pretty much it. Timeline does something similar but it also tries to combine things with all of the various subsystems like file IO, garbage collection and so on. 
Tracing and line by line are much more invasive. They will slow down your application because of the type of information that they track, which is the number of method calls. So if you're not interested in the number of method calls, then sampling and timeline are perfect. If you do want to know method calls or the number of method calls, then tracing and line by line are the one to go with. I also want to mention in terms of debugging, there's also going to be a difference between debug and release mode of your application. Typically, release mode is going to be much faster. And the reason for that is that the just-in-time compiler will optimize your code for you. It will figure out which methods can be inlined. It will figure out how it can make your code run faster. So typically, your profiling session will have to be in release mode because that's what you're going to put in production anyway. Now for the remainder of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is make use of the debug modes because it gives us a number of interesting performance issues in this Sudoku solver that we can look into with the profiler. In our next video, we will have a look at how we can optimize this application. All right, let's start optimizing our application. I'm going to start with profiling again. And for this specific one, I'm going to make use of sampling as the profiler. The reason for that is sampling and timeline as well have uh, low profiling overheads. And since I don't do any database access or file IO and so on, I think timeline may be overkill for this specific application. So let's go with sampling instead. While I was saying that, uh, we captured the snapshot and we can dive into that snapshot. What we'll see here is the methods on the left, the call tree of the application and we get a highlight of the hot path. So we can follow the first item in our tree and we can see the entire path of methods that takes much time, uh, most time. In this case, apparently a set number methods, which is, uh, I think a property is taking most time or at least causing this entire tree to take most time in the application. So let's see if we can optimize this and jump to source, or we can use a shortcut as well and jump to source and then see what is going on. Now number is a property and properties are essentially methods. So when we set them, we are calling the set method. We, when we get a value, we call the get method and then get a value from a compiler generated field in the backgrounds. So instead of making this a property, let's maybe see if we can optimize our code by making this a field. So let's make it a field, save and then profile again. So we can see if this has actually optimized something. Um, this is, by the way, a very good workflow profile. Check what is happening, then make a change. Validate if the change you made actually solves something, because if it doesn't, maybe you want to keep your original code instead, because there's no use in optimizing it if it doesn't do a thing. Right, our profiling session finished. We can go to our previous one. We can see we came from 12.180 uh, seconds. Our new session took us 11.5, so we removed half a second more or less from our application runtime by changing this uh, property into a field. So we can now uh, start optimizing the rest of the application. Again, we will follow the hot path that is there. And deep down, we will see that the cell constructor apparently is the heavy hitter now. This is the one causing this entire call path to be on the hot paths. And I know we are trying every single cell brute force to solve our Sudoku. So this is probably the reason why the cell constructor is there. We are just calling it a lot, but there's not a lot of logic. We are basically setting uh, two fields in our class and that's it. So there's not a lot of room to optimize things here, which means that we can maybe ignore this specific one. And what we can do is in our snapshots, let's say this copy method, this entire copy method, let's act as if we already optimized this one. The context menu gives us an option to exclude the methods, but we can also exclude the entire call paths. And in our snapshot, the timing of this specific method will now be set to zero, which means we virtually optimize this entire thing. And the next item on our hot path is now going to be this cell methods that we are calling. The cell method is on our, um, on our board. So let's jump to our board class that we have. There we go. Find that cell methods and we can see what it is doing. So this method apparently is taking a lot of time, but the only thing it's doing is apparently checking an array that we have and then fetching a specific cell by row and column. So again, this is a method call. The compiler, or at least the runtime, will have to load some variables onto the stack, 
check that array, then push something from the stack again and give it to your application. So maybe instead of making this a method call, we can optimize this entire thing by using that array directly everywhere we are using it. So if we would go to one of the usages, instead of using that cell method, what we could do is make use of cells and then set the row and the column and use that one instead. Now, I optimized this one manually, but that's probably not the best way to go uh, because there's uh, still eight usages of this cell method. So what we can do instead is refactor it using the refactor this menu and inline this method. And what will happen is that Rider will optimize our codes and essentially take the body of our current methods and use that as the, as the call everywhere the cell method was used previously. And we can see that here, Rider now optimized everything and made use of that cells uh, array instead of calling that methods. Again, we want to validate that this fix actually did something and that our performance is now better. So let's run our profiler again and see what comes out. I think we were close to 12 seconds or 11 point something. Actually should check um, and see if this improved things. So on our previous snapshots, we can remove that filter that we added. We were at 11.5 seconds. In our new snapshot, we are now at 9.8 seconds. So we came originally from, I think, close to 12 seconds. We are now close to nine or 10 seconds. So we already removed two seconds of uh, running our application. Now I'm going to stop optimizing here because everything we see in the hot path is going to be something that is copying cells, constructing cells and so on. And typically if constructors and things like that are on your hot paths, it means that you are constructing a lot of cells in this case, which could typically indicate a memory issue. And memory issues is something that we can investigate in our next, um, in our next step using dynamic program analysis in, uh, in Rider. Previously, we concluded that the cell constructor is on the hot path of our performance snapshots, which is kind of strange because all it is doing, as we can see in code here, is assigning some fields and properties, so it's not rocket science. Could it be that we are just creating too many cells and hence causing too much memory pressure and having the garbage collector having to clean up those cells? Well, we could confirm this using a memory profiler, or we can make use of a tool called dynamic program analysis in Rider. Dynamic program analysis is not a profiler, but it is a tool that analyzes memory usage of our applications we run from within Rider all the time. It gives us good information about where memory is being allocated on the large object heap or the small object heap, and gives us information about closure captures and so on. So we can see the results here, we can see them from the tool window, but we can also see the paths of um, yeah, where memory allocations are happening in the editor. You will see it with this uh, bright color there. We can also click items there, look at the call stack and follow along where the hot path of memory allocations are happening. So we can follow along in our codes. Now, cell constructor is the one that we expect or suspect of uh, being a heavy hitter in the memory profiling snapshots. And indeed we can see that DPA also flagged this one as uh, cell.copy where we are allocating types of type cell, which is what we expected. So we can optimize this. Let's go to our cell. And instead of making it a class, in this case, what we can do is make it a struct. By making it a struct, we are no longer allocating it on the heap, but we are allocating on the stack. Don't do this for every single application, but in this case, this should be fine because all we are doing while brute force solving our Sudoku puzzle is uh, creating cells, destroying cells, creating cells, destroying cells. So by making it a struct, we should be allocating it on the stack now instead of the heap and DPA should no longer flag our copy cells as being the heavy hitter. So let's refresh the results here and we can see that the memory usage went down. We are still allocating there obviously, but the big memory usage went down. There's another interesting one here, that's cell.popNextNumber. This one is basically checking the next number in our application to see if our Sudoku puzzle can be solved, but it is capturing a closure object. And we can see that in code, um, we are running this enumerable.range, we are running this nine times, so for every number, we are running first or default. First or default has a condition where we check if options contains the current number, and if that is true, we will use that number. 
Now, to work with this object, uh, options object, we have to capture it. And that is what is happening here. We are allocating a hidden compiler generated uh, type. And we can see that using the heap allocation viewer plugin. So if we hover this one, we can see that there's a delegate allocation where we are capturing the options variable. So to solve this, what we can do is no longer make use of language integrated queries, but convert this entire statement into code. And instead of capturing that options object, we can simply uh, start working with it, sorry, like this. Uh, we can start working with it like this and use it directly instead of having to use this language integrated query. If we would now run our application, I would expect that this capture of uh, closure is, uh, is gone from code and no longer is flagged by DPA. So let's see if that is indeed the case. All right, we ran our application. Let's look at DPA again. And we can see now that our closure object capture is gone. So we optimized the memory usage of our application using dynamic program analysis, looking at where allocations are happening and improving on things. In this tutorial, we have seen the different profiling modes that are available in Rider. Sampling, tracing, line by line, and the timeline profiler. Sampling or timeline profiling have low overheads and come in handy to do most performance analysis on your application. We use the profiler in Rider to investigate and optimize performance of the Sudoku solver. By measuring, optimizing, and then measuring again, we gradually remove performance and memory issues from the code base. We also use dynamic program analysis, or DPA, which is a tool that analyzes your code automatically every time it runs. It gives you feedback around memory usage and allocations.